to review, we've done a lot of stuff about distance. A perpendicular bisector uh, is whenever I have two points and I want to figure out what are all the points that are the same distance from those two points. Well, here they are. And that becomes because this line segment actually cross, sorry, that black line crosses a line segment of these points at a right, at a right angle, making it a perpendicular bisector of that line segment. That was the first thing about distance we talked about. Uh, the next one we did was a circle, which means all the points that are the same distance from a central point. And every point here is the same distance from that central point. Um, and the circle can be defined in terms of a center, hk, and a radius, r. Then we moved on. Uh, instead of having a, a single point, we have a point and a line. And with a point and a line, we can now define uh, what is called a parabola. And a parabola were all the points that are the same distance from that point in that line. So uh, what I mean by that would be here's a point that's the same distance from the point in the line, here's another one, here's another one, and we now create a very unique curve based on that, and that's what all parabolas are. For an ellipse, for an ellipse we actually go back to the circle, but instead of having one center we have two of them, but we don't call them the center, we call them foci. So here's, well, let's make this mathematically correct. Here's a, a center with two foci, um, and that would actually generate an ellipse that would be uh, a little bigger than I have room for here. I'm going to slide this down. And let's get one that's actually mathematically correct in terms of its dimensions and its proportions. Um, this would be what it would look like. And yes. You can look at the ABC on that one and see why it's mathematically correct. Now that I have it correct, I'm actually going to take it and shrink it just so it stays proportional while still being somewhat correct. So that's how I'm cheating on this one. Um, but it's all the points that are the same distance where the sum of the distance to each foci is constant. Or we can say the sum of focal radii. The sum of focal radii, in other words, our 2A is constant. So this brings us to our last shape, the hyperbola. And the hyperbola has a similar definition um, to an ellipse, but hyperbola is all points uh, in the plane whose difference, whose difference of focal radii is constant. So an ellipse was sum of focal radii, this is difference of focal radii is constant. Or we can say difference of the distance to the foci. That's what really focal radii means. So uh, in general I can draw two different kinds of ellipse or hyperbola. I can do one like this um, where I'm going to draw a center. I'm going to draw two foci and I'm going to wrap around those foci like this and like this. In a sense, it's kind of like a double parabola, although it's a little wider than that. Um, I like to think of it as a blown up ellipse. Like here's an ellipse, but this kind of blew up. And we call that a focus. I call that a focus. That's a center. And this one has a horizontal transverse axis. Transverse means cut across. So the horizontal axis right here cuts across it. That's what makes this a horizontal transverse axis. Here's another one over here. Ooh, I kind of like that, but I'm not going to use that. Here's another one over here. God dang it. It has a vertical one. So I'm going to go up and down and put foci. Still have a center. And just kind of wrap around there wrap around here and I call that a vertical transverse axis because my uh, there we go my uh, the axis cuts across vertically the axis cuts across the two shapes vertically so that's a vertical transverse axis and right now I'm just trying to identify the two different types horizontal and vertical and how they look because that could get a little confusing 
So I'm going to jump right ahead to the equations, and we're going to sort of knock on from here and talk about what's similar and what's different, because these are very similar to ellipses. There are some important differences. So we'll call this general info. And here's the first equation. Uh, it starts off x minus h squared over a squared. We also have a y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So what's different? Uh, it's the symbol in the middle. There's a minus now instead of a plus. Um, and that one, this particular one, is for ones that have a horizontal transverse axis. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. The one for a vertical transverse axis, we really just move the negative sign uh, the other place. Because if I think about it, this one's a positive and this one's a negative. So if I want to flip that around, I need to switch something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the y minus k first over a squared uh, minus x minus h squared over b squared is equal to 1. And that's the one for a vertical transverse axis. So transverse, sorry, I'm not spelling that right. So typically with this, uh, we need to know a few things, and we need to clarify a few things. Uh, let's start with A and B. Uh, with a hyperbola, A is still the distance from the center uh, to, we're going to call these Vs, but these are not major vertices anymore. Um, we're going to call these endpoints of the transverse axis. It's not even the major axis anymore. It's called the transverse axis. Because in, an, in a hyperbola, the major axis can be smaller than the minor axis. So we can't call a major and minor anymore. Um, B is the distance from the center to these capital M's which are now called the endpoints of the conjugate axis. And that just actually means the other axis, not the transverse axis. So I'm going to go back up here and we're going to kind of label this just in terms of uh, this purple one here is the transverse. And that means that this one here is the conjugate. And it just happens that in these, your conjugate and your transverse are actually the x and y axis, but those could be shifted. Um, I could take this entire shape here and move it around and you kind of create a different imaginary axis on both of them. Okay, uh, C, we're still going to call the distance from the center to the foci, uh, and you know that. And so really if I go back up here and slide back up, what makes A A is that A is positive, or in the general form, A is first. So in an ellipse, A was bigger, but in a hyperbola, A is just first. Um, so I'm going to start to draw sort of a bigger, bigger example of this. And I'm going to sort of set this down here like this. I'm trying to make sure that this is going to be mathematically correct again. And this one will be. Uh, this one will be rather large, but this will work. And let's make this a horizontal one. I'm going to put my vertices uh, at right and left three units. And uh, that's going to be vertex 2 and vertex 1, just to kind of separate those. I'm going to put my M's vertically. I'm going to put them 4 up and 4 down. I can do that. Furthermore, I'm going to put the foci now outside of the vertex. So if both sides still lie along the same plane as the vertices, but or same line, but they're outside instead of being inside. <clears throat> the transverse axis is the line segment V1 to V2. And it also has a length of 2A. So just like before, A meant the distance from the center to the vertex. The conjugate axis, uh, we should call this M1 and M2, so this is going to be M1, M2 line segment, has a length of 2B.
and there is no real focal axis thing or anything. So let's talk about A, B, and C here. Clearly, when I look at this, I realize that C is the biggest now. And without doing a long, complicated um, explanatory proof, um, I can actually start to determine that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So with all this information down, um, we now get to the fun part. This is the fun part for me. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rectangle drawing tool and I am going to draw a rectangle around the vertices, both the major and the minor vertices, or the V's and the M's. And let's take note of what I have here. Uh, in the world of, uh, sorry, in the world of math, what we call these is this is a box that's going to help us create our asymptotes. Um, asymptotes are going to be guidelines that help us draw this. So I'm going to draw the diagonals of this box as dotted lines. Um, I'm going to draw them here, dotted lines as straight as you possibly can, and then you're going to have to continue um, out of this. So it sometimes helps to say, look, this thing has a slope, uh, and has a slope of b over a, or negative b over a, depending on which diagonal you're talking about. And I know that because this distance is b and this distance is a, so a point here would have a slope of b over a. Anyway, um, I have the advantage of being able to use a little line tool, but can't necessarily do it as a broken line yet, at least with this version. But So I'll, I'll suffer with you and we'll just do the dotted line. So what I want to do is I want to extend this at least one more spot up. So I'm going to kind of come up here and have it connect all the way up there. And I'm going to want this to extend at least one more spot down and connect all the way down here. And then I'm going to do that. And yeah, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to create some more space because I didn't plot out enough space. I'm going to slide this down a little bit. Um, and we're going to do another one up here coming up like this. Oops, way up there. And let's go all the way down here. This is just a sketch, but I can at least try to make my sketch somewhat good in terms of how it looks. Okay, that's okay. Um, that's probably about as straight as I can draw these um, and just kind of screwed it out. So why have we done that? Well, again, this is going to become really quick and the fun part. You're going to take your pencil, you're going to put it on the V's. And you're going to draw out to the asymptotes. And then you're going to do the same thing on this V. Draw out to the asymptotes. You're not going to touch them. You're just going to get really close. And if I were to actually erase everything um, that I just did, what I'd have would be a pretty, pretty good version of what that's going to look like. Now, I don't want you to erase it. You can leave it, you should leave it there as a guide for what you just did. And that's done. So let's do some examples. Um, here's this kind of general outline we're going to use for, for all this stuff, our steps. And if I look at the first one, um, I know that it's given the graphing form. The direction, because y is first, um, and y is positive. Since y is positive, this is going to be a vertical transverse axis, which means that my v's are going to go vertically and my m's are going to go horizontally, the opposite of what we just did. My center is 0, 0. And just like before, I'm going to do a little sidebar and figure out what little a, little b, and little c are. Well, a is first, so a squared is 36 b squared is 4, which means that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. This is different, and I want to emphasize this. In this thing, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared because c has to be the biggest. So I get c squared is 40, and that means that a is 6, b is 2, and c is 2 times the square root of 10. And 2 radical 6 is about 6.3. So coming back to the problem, uh, we, we return and we say, um, oh, it wants to know A and B. Well, that's convenient. We just figured them out over here. A is 6 and B is 2. Uh, and if I start plotting this stuff out, my center's here. I'm going to go up 6 and down 6 and put points. And those are Vs. 
I'm going to go right to and left to, and those are M's. Then I'm going to go up 6.3. Yes, they're outside of the, of the stuff now. And I'm going to put little red tick marks, and that's my F, and then a red tick mark, and that's my F. Um, and I'm going to put the coordinates down of those foci. That is 0, plus or minus 2 root 10, or 0, plus or minus 6.3. Finally, as a graph to this, and this is the fun part if you do it right, um, I'm going to sketch a box. And again, I'm going to have to sketch this by hand because I don't have really good graphing tools for doing it on some, a page inserted. So that is terrible. And it's hard to do this with a stylus because I can't put anything on the screen. But at least my slope, and if I look at this correctly, um, my slope is up 3 over 1. So I'm going to go up 3 over 1 and try to connect this as best I can with the dotted line. So I'm going to continue that dotted line going all the way as far as possible through the graph because we might as well do it through the entire graph. And then I'm going to do a slope of negative 3 going the other way. Um, so that's going to kind of kick up up here, down, down, negative 3 passing through all the points that a slope of negative 3 would pass through. Finally I'm going to take my pencil put it on the vertex, not on the focus, but on the vertex, and connect up towards the asymptote, never crossing, and then connect down, never crossing. And that's it. That's one of them. Let's do the next one. Divide both sides by 100, and I'm going to get x squared over 25 minus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. <clears throat> that is graphing form. Center again is here at zero. Oh, sorry. This is a horizontal transverse axis. I'm just going to put horizontal because the bigger number, sorry, not the bigger number, the positive one is first and x is first. So hooray. Um, center again is at zero, zero. We'll practice the zero, zero center for a sec. Now, because it asks for a and b, I forgot it did that before, I'm just going to put a is equal to 5 b is equal to 2, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and put c. So we're going to go c is equal to the square root of 25 plus 4, which is the square root of 29, which is approximately, let's do it real quick, 29, 5.4. So if I know c is 5.4, then I come back over here. Uh, to the graph and let's put center at 0, 0. We're going to go right 5 and left 5 then up 2 and down 2 V, V, M, and M. And I'm going to put little red marks for the fo foci which are going to be here and here very close to the vertex. Okay. <coughs> now when I put the coordinates of the foci down, just be very careful. Now we're along the x-axis, not the y-axis. So that's going to be plus or minus root 29, 0, or plus or minus 5.4, 0. Finally, for the graph, I could kind of put little guide points. I don't necessarily have to draw the whole box. I really just need to know where the corners are. So there's the corner, here's a corner, here's a corner, and here's a corner. Those are the corners of my box, and I have to connect um, from the center to the diagonals of each of those. Well, I just need kind of a point here and a point here, because that's going to be what the slope's going to do. And I'm just going to go down, 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 all the way to the center, and then continue to the other end. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. That should be right there, and this should be right here. Okay, so down, down, down. And I got that one. Now, if you think about it, I don't really even need to go all the way through the center. I just need to go from here up to the top right there. So you can do that too if you want. You don't need to include the whole thing. I'm going to include it here just for symmetry. But when we get to the later ones, I think I'm going to skip some of that. So this one goes all the way down there. Okay, now the fun part again uh, put your pencil on the vertex, connect out, connect out. And then same thing here on the vertex, connect out, 
and connect out. And that's it. Number three, I've got an off-center one now, um, and I X is first, so let's go with uh, A is given, B, it's a horizontal, because X is first. Remember, within a hyperbola, it's about what's first. With an ellipse, it's about what's bigger. And C, my center, is at 2, negative 1. So um, I'm just going to put a point there, 2, negative 1. And let's go back over here. A is equal to 3. B is equal to 4. That may screw some of you up, but with a hyperbola, A is first. And A can be smaller than B. So A is 3, B is 4. And C is equal to, uh, well, for those of you who know your Pythagorean th triples, 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple because 9 plus 16 is 25. Square root of 25. Okay. So this is an example of one that's going to be just a little tricky because <laughs> we are off-center now. So I'm going to go um, it's horizontal. I'm going to go right 3 and put a point and left 3 and put a point. And those points are, are my, the end of my A values. Those are my vertices. Then I'm going to go up 4 and put a point, and down 4 and put a point. Those are my M's. And then finally, I'm going to go right 5 and put a point, and left 5 and put a point. Now, if you put those points down, your foci should not be hard to figure out. Um, really, you can do this in one of two ways. I added to 2 and I subtracted it to, from 2, so that's 7, negative 1, or negative 3, negative 1. And that's also where I put the points down in the graph. So that's where the foci are. And this might help actually to draw the box. So I'm going to go back to drawing this box thing because this is off center. So this can be a little tricky. It's not quite as symmetrical as the other one. Um, so this goes across, and then this goes down, and this goes across. And if I sort of draw my diagonals again, we're going to go up from here and down from here being careful to cross through every point I need because my slope is up 4 over 3. So I'm really being careful about that. Try even trying to hit the half ways. Up 4 over 3 and down 4 right 3. Um, pencil on the vertex. Connect out. Connect out. Just take it a little slow. Don't, don't rush it. You can look pretty good if you just slow down and that's not bad. Lastly, number four, uh, we need to complete the square on this one. So I'm going to factor a 9 out, make it x squared, uh, plus this would be 12x plus a box, then minus 16, parentheses y squared, minus, let's see, 128, 16, that would be, oh, I know this, is that 8? Yep. So 8y. Uh, plus a hexagonal shape is equal to 76 plus that'd be 9 times a box plus 16 times a hexagon. I know that's kind of tiny, but let's let's fill it in. Half of 12 squared is 36. Half of 8 squared is 16. And so 36 and 16. And what I end up with is, let's see, this is going to be 9 x plus 6 squared minus 16 y minus 4 squared and then let's just do it over here 76 or yeah 76 plus 9 times 36 and then plus 256 and that's 656. Oops. Uh, but I made a mistake because that just doesn't not look right, does it? Um, and here's the mistake. This is a negative 16 I took out. So this should be negative, which means that if I go back up here, that, let's select this, that should be minus 256. Okay, that doesn't look right. Oh, forgot the 6. Sorry, I'm trying to do this on one hand, just kind of sitting. Boom, 144. Oh, beautiful. Because that's 144, that divides evenly. Um, and I'm going to get x plus 6 squared over 16 
minus y minus 4 squared over 9 is equal to 1. That kind of tells me I did everything right. So, yeah, I've got a lot of error correction just to make sure I do these things correct. This is a horizontal because x is first. It has a center at negative 6, positive 4. So let's go ahead and plot that. Negative 6, positive 4. It's going to be a little tricky because this is probably going to go off graph. Um, but let's just check and make sure of this. Yeah, if I go left 4 and right 4 um, from my a value, it's going to go off. So I'm going to rescale this. We're going to rescale by half. So I'm going to go uh, over 3 and up 2 for negative 6, 4. Um, I know that my a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 3. So that means right 2, left 2, up 1.5, down one and a half. Seems like we're getting pretty small there, but again, if we'd just blown everything up by twos, we'd be off the graph right now. Um, or right at the very edge, not able to do our asymptotes. Also, C is going to be equal to five. This is three, four, five again. So that means two and a half, which means that we have a focus here and a focus here. Again, tiny, but what choice do I have? You guys have the choice of using larger graph paper, and I would recommend you do that. So, uh, foci, Last little step here, that's going to be, um, again, horizontal. So negative 6, if I write this down, it's actually negative 6 plus or minus 5, 4. But that just becomes um, negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, 4. And negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11, 4. Um, so those would have been off the graph already. Finally, just go back up here. We're going to put our little box around this. I don't know why I chose red. Do the best you can with the slope here. Um, so that's going to go to there. And this is up. Well, the slope should be similar. So this is up 1.5 over 2, which is the same as up 3 and over 4. So up 3 and over 4 puts it here, and then here, and then down 3 and over 4 puts it there. And I'm going to try to put it there. Oops, I tilted just a little bit. And then I can kind of side ball this there and there and there. So lastly, uh, set, put it on the vertex, go out, and put it on the vertex and go out. And that's it.